Hey, I'm Creech, and this is Creech and Cars. Today we're going to be taking a look at the life and mysterious death of an automotive icon, Rudolf Diesel. Quick note on pronunciation, I say diesel, a lot of uh, other Americans say diesel. According to my research, the German way of saying this name is Diesel, but I'm just going to say Diesel. Rudolf Christian Carl Diesel was born on March 18th, 1858 in Paris, France to Theodore and Elise Diesel, who had left Bavaria for France 10 years earlier. His childhood was pretty rough as his father struggled to make a steady income as a bookbinder and leather goods manufacturer. He briefly lived with another family as an infant and was later sent back to Bavaria to live with his aunt and uncle, where he learned German and spent time with his uncle, who was a mathematics professor. He then attended school in France, where he first became interested in technology, and he won an award for his academic achievements there. In 1870, the Franco-Prussian War broke out, forcing the Diesels, along with many other German immigrants, to flee France entirely. Rudolf and his parents settled in London, but Rudolf was soon sent back to Bavaria to live with his aunt and uncle again. Within a few years of schooling back in Germany, he had gained a solid interest in engineering. He wrote a letter back home letting his parents know that he would be attending the Royal Bavarian Polytechnic of Munich to study engineering despite his parents' wishes that he join the workforce immediately. And it was at this institution that he would meet Professor Carl von Lind. Lind taught Diesel and became a mentor to him. It was here during his time in college under Lynn that Diesel first became interested in creating a highly efficient engine. He first tinkered with a steam engine that was powered by ammonia vapor. The use of this vapor did create an incredible amount of pressure inside the steam engine, uh, so much so that when testing an engine once, the cylinders exploded and Diesel was hit by cylinder heads and other shrapnel spent several months in the hospital and was left with lingering eyesight issues. Steam engines were the predominant engine of this time, and it's important to note that steam engines then had an efficiency of around 10%. After his failed experiments with steam engines, Diesel changed his focus to designing an internal combustion engine that could reach the limits of the Carnot cycle. Lind and Diesel both studied efficiency, heat, and entropy as applied in the engineering field. Carl von Lind focused more on the reversibility of the Carnot cycle, and he became more interested in refrigeration. He would move to Paris in subsequent years to start a refrigeration company that's still around today, and Diesel would accept a, an engineering position at this company following his graduation in 1880. Diesel helped von Lind develop modern refrigeration techniques, and he eventually became a director of Lind PLC. He met a woman named Martha Flash and married her in 1883. The two would go on to have three children. Throughout these years in refrigeration, he did continue working on his engine. I'm not going to go into incredible mechanical detail in this video, but the basic principle he designed in pursuit of a 75% efficiency was a four cycle internal combustion engine where the fuel would be injected at the end of the compression stroke and then ignited by the heat generated by the pressure buildup from the following compression. He was able to obtain multiple patents by the mid 1890s, but he knew his work was far from done. Around this time, a German engineering firm in his hometown of Augsburg approached Diesel to formally test this compression-fueled internal combustion engine. Diesel designed and built what is now known as the Motor 250-400. It was officially tested in 1897 and was successful producing 25 horsepower out of a single cylinder. And it had an efficiency of 26%, far off from his 75% goal. But remember, this was more than two and a half times the typical steam engine then. Furthermore, you can still see this engine today. It's on display at the German Technical Museum in Munich. Into the next century, Diesel saw the expansion of the use of his engine and earned lucrative royalties with over 70,000 diesel engines in use across the globe by 1912. However, Rudolf Diesel didn't have much time left. Some background information around the time of his death, a lot of political change is going underway in Western Europe and especially in Germany at this time. Germany is undergoing unification during Diesel's formative years and a period of heavy armament and militarization is also taking place when he's working on his engines and one thing that isn't really known is what Diesel thought about Germany's place in global politics. He was born and spent much time in France and although he would eventually return to Germany his parents never would so he did have a lot of ties outside of Germany 
So keep that in mind as I go over the mysterious circumstances of his death. On September 29th, 1913, Rudolf Diesel boarded the SS Dresden at a port in Antwerp, Belgium. He was traveling to London to meet with a British company called the Consolidated Diesel Manufacturing Co. The intent was to sell his patents and provide knowledge to the British Navy or in some manner provide his engine design to the British government. The night he boarded the ship, he was last seen going to his private cabin around 10 p.m. and told crew members to wake him by 6.15 the next morning. The next morning, the crew members entered his room and did not find him. There was only his nightshirt laying on the bed, as well as his diary and a watch in the room. For September 29th, in his diary, he had simply drawn a cross and written nothing else. On the after deck, which is the deck towards the front of the ship, his hat was laid on top of his folded overcoat, and that was all that remained of him. Ten days later, an unrecognizable body was found in the water by a Dutch boat. That crew retrieved personal affects, such as a pill case, wallet, pocket knife, and ID from the body. Diesel's son, Eugene determined these items to have belonged to his father. It was also revealed that back home he had left a bag with his wife that he told her not to open until the following week. When she opened it, she found 20,000 marks, which is the equivalent of about 120 to $130,000 today, and bank account statements that showed he had drained the balances. This brings up another crucial piece of information regarding his death. Although he had become a millionaire from his engine, he had mostly squandered the money through bad investments, and he was deeply in debt. All in all, this leaves us with really two possibilities. Either Rudolf Diesel killed himself to escape his financial failure and copious debt, or he was killed by German agents because he wouldn't retain his knowledge and patents for his country. The cross in his diary and money he left to his wife strongly suggest that he knew about his impending doom, and many people see this as evidence that he planned to commit suicide. But it can also be seen as evidence that he knew the German government might try to do something to stop him on his trip to London or was just scared of something happening to him in general. After his death, no monument was constructed in his name in Germany. Margokichi Yamaoka, a Japanese diesel pioneer, visited Germany in 1950. There, upon learning that there was no monument to Rudolf Diesel, he created the Rudolf Diesel Memorial Garden in Augsburg in 1957. And that's where the story ends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you make of Rudolf Diesel's life and innovation, as well as his disappearance and death. This is the first installment of a series called Automotive Icons, where I delve into the history and lives of the pioneers in the automotive industry. So let me know if you want to see more of these videos. I'm also trying to get videos out quickly, but uh, I am just very busy with other things in life right now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.